Transformer is the main architecture that's powering the whole Gen AI and LLM boom at the moment. But transformers require massive amounts of GPU memory to train and run. And it's difficult to fit some of the bigger models into memory. And this is why we have something called as sharding. Sharded models take significantly less memory compared with regular models that are not sharded. Sharding distributes the computational workload of a large model across multiple machines or devices. It's particularly useful when dealing with massive data sets or models that are too large to fit into the memory of a single machine or that requires significant computational resources to process. If I had to explain sharding in one sentence, then I would explain it like this. Instead of using one GPU, it shards or distributes an AI model's parameters across different GPUs with the help of parallel data workers and can also optionally offload part of the training computation to the CPUs along with the GPUs. This essentially is the best way to describe sharding, but we will explore a bit more. There are three main steps, model partitioning, distribution, and parallel processing. Model partitioning, the first step in sharding involves breaking down the machine learning model into smaller manageable parts. This can be done based on various criteria, such as layers of a neural network, groups of neurons, or segments of the data set. Distribution, once the model is partitioned, each part is assigned to a different computational unit. These units can be separate machines, processors, or even distributed computing nodes. Parallel processing. With the model distributed across multiple computational units, each unit can independently process its assigned part of the model or dataset in parallel with the others. And we will talk about this in more details in just a minute. After sharding, you also need something called as aggregation at the end. So after processing their respective parts, the results are aggregated or combined to produce the final output. This aggregation step might involve combining predictions from different parts of the model in the case of inference or combining gradients in the case of training. So sharding can be very useful when you want to train the model and training models is where we should talk about two distinct techniques. Data parallel processing, which we talked about briefly earlier and distributed data parallel processing. And these two techniques basically build up on sharding. So sharding is like the foundation for more advanced techniques. Now we will have a dedicated video on these two because these are huge topics, but all you need to know about them is data parallelism enables us to divide data sets into batches and each batch is processed independently on different computational units. But the model parameters are replicated across all these units. And distributed data parallelism takes data parallelism a step further by distributing both the model parameters and the data across multiple devices or machines. Each device or machine processes a subset of the data and computes gradients independently. This parallelism can significantly speed up training and inference times as multiple computations are performed simultaneously. Let's take the example of a highly popular sharding method called the FSDP, which is the fully sharded data parallel. I'll leave a link to this meta-engineering blog in the description of this video. FSDP is a type of data parallel training algorithm. Although the parameters are sharded to different GPUs, the computation for each micro batch of data is still local to each GPU worker. This conceptual simplicity makes FSDP easier to understand and more applicable to a wide range of usage scenarios. Compared with other sharding methods, FSDP shards parameters more uniformly and is capable of better performance by communication and computation overlapping during training. Now models have billions of parameters as you've seen, like LAMA2 is 70 billion, GPT 3.5 is 175 billion, and so on. But this research paper by Microsoft talks about sharding that can even take us to 1 trillion parameters and beyond with ease. And that's how models with trillions of parameters like GPT-4 have been trained. And I'll put the link to this in the description of this video. This talks about a new technique called the zero redundancy optimizer, which optimizes memory and vastly improves training speed while increasing the model size that can be efficiently trained. It does this by eliminating memory redundancies in data and leveraging model parallel training while retaining low communication volume and high computational granularity, allowing us to scale the model size proportional to the number of devices with sustained high efficiency. 
This paper compares this technique with other sharding techniques like data parallelism, pipeline parallelism, model parallelism, CPU offloading, and, and mentions that all of these techniques make trade-offs between functionality, usability, as well as memory and compute slash communication efficiency. But all of these things are actually crucial to training with speed and scale. And this new zero redundancy optimizer technique doesn't have any of these limitations. This technique basically focuses on something completely different, which is the model's state memory and not at all on the data and parameters. So sharding helps us achieve the same results as quantization, which is the ability to run large models on smaller GPUs, but the approach is very different. But in real world scenarios, you would ideally do both to be able to scale models to trillions of parameters easily. I hope you learned a bit about sharding in this video. Make sure you check out all the other videos in this series, as well as the LLM and Gen AI project series. And do share this with your friends. Make sure you like and subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.